Hey everyone, welcome to Break It Yourself. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Solo Stove 2.0. The main difference between the 1.0, the original, and the 2.0 is the 2.0 has an ashtray to easily be able to remove ash without having to dump out the solo stove. Your ash would have gone through these holes and fallen in this pan, this tray right here, which is removable. You take this, dump it out. Okay, if I had a bigger trash can, this would be easier. So it didn't get it all. You still have some around the side here, which I guess means eventually you will have to like vacuum this thing out or, or dump it out. But most of it is in this little guy. If you are new to the fire pit and solo stove game, the main thing that they're known for is smokeless fires. And the way that they do that is they reintroduce oxygen, they get this reburn, and you really get a nice, almost smokeless fire. Now this 2.0 update applies to the Yukon, the bonfire, as well as the Ranger. I'm dealing with the bonfire here. I do want to start out by saying Solo Stove did send me this fire pit free of charge. No money changed hands. They don't have any creative input into this video and I didn't sign a contract. It was pretty great. They just shipped it to me and that was it. Didn't say another word. So this is pretty cool. Historically, I have reviewed the Brio fire pits versus the Solo Stove. So I did that a couple years ago. Brio has since gone up in price a little bit. Speaking of these prices, the Ranger is going to be $229, the Bonfire is going to be $299, and the Yukon is going to be $399. Now, these things are very lightweight. I have the Bonfire, it's about 20 pounds, very portable. You can move it around very easily because it's only 20 pounds compared to my Brio, which is more of like 50, 60 pounds. But I will say, being that thinner wall and lighter, it is gonna be a little more prone to getting dinged up a little bit. So if you hit the side or something like that, it's gonna dent a bit easier just because that metal is thinner. Now these things are incredibly easy to light. You just get a little bit of kindling, light that thing up. And if you have dry wood, that thing is just gonna go and they get very, very hot. I have uh, 24 inch splits. Obviously those are not gonna fit in there. So I'm gonna grab my little electric chainsaw, which I love because it's cheaper in my area to buy wood, 24 inch splits, and then cut them down myself. I'm gonna use like a big green egg or this, these are Kamado Joe uh, fire starters here. And I'm gonna, you can use whatever tickles your fancy, but this is what I'm gonna use. Oh man, those fit perfect. A major criticism of the smokeless fire pits is that most of the heat that you generate goes upwards. That's kind of the same for all of them. I will say Solo Stove has mitigated that. They offer, for an additional charge of course, an accessory that is a heat deflector. So if you really need a ton of heat, more outward heat instead of that upward heat, then you're gonna wanna look into that heat deflector. I will say for me, Southeast Louisiana, very mild winter. I really don't see myself needing that. And I've been plenty fine by having these smokeless fire pits. They're more effective kind of if you stand around them just because that heat goes up. If you sit, sit down and lean back, you're really not gonna get a ton of that heat. So if you're in a very cold climate, I definitely would look into the heat deflector. They're not cheap, unfortunately. One of my main criticisms against Solo Stove a few years ago was that the Brio had an easy cooking system and at the time Solo Stove did not. They have since come out with a cooking system 
So if you're interested in using the fire pit and also using it to cook stuff, you can do that on solo stoves now. Again, unfortunately, it's not cheap. And a criticism here is that you cannot adjust the height of the cooking surface. So on the Brio, you could get the cooking surface all the way down towards the fire for a great sear and then go up pretty high to do like a low and slow cook. On the solo stove, it's pretty low, so you're gonna get very high heat direct cooking. They have a griddle option as well as a grill option. I knew this ahead of time because I've done a solo stove review before, but it is astonishing. The underside of this thing and just how cool it is. I can touch that stand and it's cool, you know, ambient air temperature. It's so surprising how well insulated the bottom of the solo stove is because you're just not getting any heat on that deck whatsoever. So let's go back to that fire. These fires can get incredibly hot. Typically, once I get a fire rolling in there, you're seeing 13 to 1600 degrees inside of the fire pit. So very, very hot. And they're just not gonna give you a ton of radiant heat. But if that's not a huge deal to you, or you can always get the heat deflector. The main thing is the smokeless. You're not gonna have that smoke from the wood. Even I put wet wood in these things once they're rolling and it just eats it up and there's not smoke. It's pretty incredible. So really the big upgrade, and I'm a huge fan of this, is that the 2.0, you can easily lift out the grate and then take that pan and just dump it um, once it's cooled down. The old version, you had to turn the whole thing upside down and shake it to get all of that ash out. So they great improvement. I will say it's not gonna get 100% of the ash out, but you're probably gonna get 90 to 95%. And then after, you know, maybe a dozen burns or something like that, you might actually have to tip the whole thing over. But really huge improvement versus the 1.0. All right, so here you can easily see the 2.0 far superior to the 1.0. The 1.0, so basically we have caked in ash right now, and you'd either have to get a hose or let it totally dry before you can actually dump it out and get the ash out. So you can see just how superior this is. Also, I'm gonna note here the purple and gold patina that you get on the stainless steel with the heat. Totally normal, totally fine. So huge thumbs up for the 2.0. The 1.0, this is a horrific design. If you keep up with it and did the ash regularly, wouldn't be that bad, but this is pretty poor. So I'm glad to see huge improvement here. I'll provide links down below to all the accessories as well as these 2.0 grills. If you're interested, you can go ahead and help out the channel that way. One of still a big criticism that I have of Solo Stove, which is why I originally went with the Brio. So at the time, two years ago, Solo Stove, Brio, very similar prices. One of the deciding factors that I had was that the Brio was made in America and the Solo Stove is made in China. Unfortunately, the Solo Stove is still made in China, just letting you know that. I will say Brio is coming out with more products in the future, so stay tuned because we are gonna review something that's on the horizon. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. I hope this video was helpful if you are in the market for a Solo Stove. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up and we will see you next time.